Greetings, everyone. This is Prostodontics on Friday, which explains the different steps in implant prostodontic treatment and addresses various side effects. Today, Professor Baek jang of Gyeonggi University Dental School Prostodontics Division is going to talk about screw loosening. Greetings. Before you begin, could you please provide a brief explanation about your lecture? Greetings, I'm Professor Baek jang -hyun. I work in the Prostodontic Division in Gyeonggi Dental University. I wanted to talk about various subjects and among the different topics, I decided to talk about screw loosening because this was what I found most difficult when I provided implant prosthesis. Screw loosening is something that all clinicians want to avoid, but inevitably you come across these complications. I want to talk about my experience regarding implant screw loosening and the research data which I've studied. I want to talk about why screw loosening occurs and how frequent it occurs and risk factors which lead to screw loosening. I hope you stay tuned. Professor Peck, I look forward to your lecture. Those of you watching from the dental site, on the right side, you can use the chat screen to communicate real time and raise your questions freely. These will be addressed immediately. And those of you who have been chosen will be sent a Starbucks coffee coupon. You'll be able to receive coffee coupon if you have agreed to the marketing in dental site, so please refer to it. I hope you show a lot of participation. Now let us begin Professor Peck's lecture. Greetings everyone. I would like to introduce myself once again. I am Professor Baek jang -hyun, and I work at the Prostodontic Division at Gyeonggi University. I would like to express my gratitude for inviting me to speak here today. I want to thank the staff who have prepared a lot. I would also like to express my gratitude to Professor Cho and now I will begin my lecture. As mentioned earlier, I would like to talk about implant screw loosening, which we come across inevitably. When clinicians do implant prosthodontic treatment, it is very important to choose the appropriate abutment. I choose different abutments depending on different situations. At times, I use a stock abutment. In other times, I use titanium custom abutment. In other cases, I use zirconia or ceramic abutment. The following factors need to be considered in choosing which abutment to use for the implant. Inclination of the implant placed. Placed in an angled manner or is it placed as straight? What is the placement position? Is it placed accurately in the center of a occlusal surface? Is it slightly off the center? You need to consider these factors. The gingival height or thickness, soft tissue conditions need to be considered. You need to consider whether it is anterior where aesthetics are very important or posterior where strength is more important. In clinical practice, we use different abutments. Most clinicians use two types of abutments. Stock abutment and custom titanium abutment. If you have placed the implant, Ideally, in terms of placement position and angle, my first choice of abutment is stock abutment. There are many reasons for this, but I believe that the connection area of the implant is very 
stable and superior. It has been fabricated to fit the implant perfectly. The connection area is extremely stable and sinking down, preload loss and screw loosening can mostly be avoided. You cannot use stock abutment for all cases. As mentioned, if the implant has been placed in a slightly angled way, you can use custom abutment to adjust the inclination or as shown, if you use stock abutment, the prosthesis margin can be too subgingival and the, it may be difficult to remove residual cement. In that case, if you use custom abutment, the prosthesis margin can be readjusted so that residual cement can be removed easily. In this case, custom abutment is very favorable. If you use a stock abutment, the prosthesis margin can become too subgingival. In this case, if you use the custom abutment, you'll be able to adjust the margin and also provide contour that the surgeon wants. And you need to consider how the implant was placed at all times. These are the choices that I make in my clinical practice. And this is my actual case. In this case, I used custom abutment. I did not use titanium. I used titanium base with ceramic abutment. I made it custom. And on top of it, I fabricated ceramic crown. In order to minimize possible complications of residual cement going into the gingival cravicular area, intentionally, the ceramic abutment was made supra gingival. On top of it, I made a ceramic crown and delivered it to the patient. Because it was supra gingival, there was no residual cement, and I minimized possibility of biologic complication. Custom abutment is a great treatment option for implants that have not been placed properly. One downside is that, as I mentioned when I was talking about stock abutment, the stability of the connection area between implant body and abutment is something that we need to think about. There can be sinking down or axial displacement. And because of that, preload can be lost and screw loosening can occur at times. I want to look into this matter further. Custom titanium abutment is made in different ways by different labs. The pre-milled abutment is also very diverse. It is recommended that you pay a little bit more attention to what pre-milled abutment the lab uses and how the titanium abutment is milled or how the subsequent processing occurs. In the left, you can see that the connection area with the implant body is very cleanly fabricated. On the right, even if you look with your own eyes, it's rough and not smooth. Depending on how it is processed, the stability of the connection area can vary. All labs have a lot of experience dealing with titanium abutment and have expertise. So if you just look with your eyes, there are barely times it looks rough. However, if you take a look at the micro CT, you can look at the stability of connection area on the left. It's a well-fabricated titanium custom abutment. There's contact in the superior side of the implant body and in the inferior part, there's one more contact. In other words, there's double contact structure. And the gap between implant body and abutment is a very minimum. So you can say that this is very stable. This is a different custom titanium abutment made by another lab. There needs to be double contact, one on superior side and one on inferior side, but on the inferior side, you cannot really see it. In this case, the stability of the connection area falls. There's also micro gap between the implant body and the abutment, and it's bigger than what's on the left. You cannot really see it, and it cannot really be felt with tactile sense. 
Once there's connection on the top side and if it is stable, the clinician will think that the connection area is stable. However, if you take a look at the micro CT, there is difference. If it is not extremely precise, with occlusal force, axial displacement can occur, leading to preload loss and screw loosening. I'm going to talk more in detail about axial displacement or sinking down in terms of clinical aspect later. If the connection area is not very stable and intricate upon occlusal force, it will not be distributed evenly across the implanted body, but it can be concentrated in a certain area. This is an actual study conducted by the Prosthodontics Division in Gyeonggi Dental University. The research compared the connection and stability between stuck abutment and custom abutment. Stuck abutment was classified as Group A and Group B custom titanium abutment was fabricated in Group B. For the connection area where it is connected with the implant body, a uh, pre-milled abutment was used and only superstructure was fabricated. In group C, up until the connection area, the entire thing was milled to fabricate custom abutment. Stuck abutment is group S. Custom abutment the connection area was a pre-milled abutment and the entirely milled group is as shown. Test was done. 500 Newton was applied repeatedly. Slight sinking of implant abutment was observed after once, 10 times and 100 times of force application compared with before. The stock abutment showed in black line showed the least, followed by custom titanium abutment, which showed a slightly larger value of axial displacement. There are many different opinions on axial displacement. The axial displacement of implant abutment does not necessarily cause infra occlusion. I believe if you follow through the retightening protocol and if you consider this ahead in doing clinical practice, it may differ in the statistics. But actually, clinically, it does not show significant difference. I took micro CT of the subject groups. As for stock abutment, the contact area, it has double contact and the micro cap between implant body and abutment is very minimum and it's kind of different from custom abutments. When you're using titanium custom abutment, the depths of connection area, how much the abutment goes into the implant body, or how much of a surface it is in contact with the implant body. The internal angle, whether it is hex type or non-hex type, and the material used for implant abutment can play into how the amount of axial displacement occurs and a frequency of screw loosening. I'm sure you've heard of this a lot in other seminars and lectures and you've studied a lot on this topic. Today I want to share with you my research data right here. If implant has been placed accurately like that in the middle, when force is applied, it is focused on axial loading side, so there's less screw loosening, but if it is placed slightly angled like that of the right, perhaps there may have been anatomical limitations, lack of bone, and so forth. If it is inclined like this, does it increase prosthetic complications and screw loosening? I wondered about this and I was not the only one. There were many ahead of me who also wondered about the same question. I studied these literature. I picked up four most notable. 
The first compares when the implant placement angle is over or below 15 degrees. The study reviewed prostatic complications, but it concluded that there were no major issues. The third research divides as follows. The first was the implant placed between 0 to 4 degrees, which is very accurate. Second is 12 to 33 degrees, which is slightly inclined implant. Interestingly, it's concluded that there were no unique complications. Prosthodontically, there were no major differences, and physiologically, it did not cause additional bone loss, and there were no physiologic complications. I did my own set of research and tests as well. At the Kyunghee Prosthodontics Division, six-year retrospective study had been done. The prosthesis fabricated with CAD CAM has many advantages. The advantage I want to emphasize is that because we made titanium abutment and prosthesis using CAD CAM, we have the design files. If necessary, you can look back on the files and analyze once again the placement angle and position of the implant and also link that with the patient to screw loosening. I looked at the design files of the titanium abutment and superstructure made by the Kyungi Dental University along with the chart review in 2015 in prosthodontics division at Kyungi Dental University. 225 patients had 401 implants placed. We did re-review of the CAD file that we designed and we were able to understand the angle of the implant, how inclined it was buccolingually and mesiodistally as well as the strength of the implant itself. I looked at whether the screw hole of the implant prosthesis is at the center of the occlusal surface or was slightly deviated, and I saw that all through the CAT file. And I also checked the wear pattern of adjacent teeth. I was also able to check the difference between the prosthesis provided to a patient with extreme wear or no wear pattern. I also looked at whether the antagonist was natural dentition, implant, or denture. I looked at the CAT file to glean these series of data, and I collected them. I aligned them with the patient's chart, patient's gender, age, implant position, were reviewed. By implant position, I checked whether it was placed in the anterior area, premolar, molar area. That's what I mean by the implant position. And I have already mentioned about the wear pattern. I also looked at whether screw loosening was related to the diameter of the implant, whether the antagonist was denture or natural dentition. At times, it Prosthesis was made in single crowns or two or more implants in the form of splints were provided. I also looked at whether splinting caused the screw loosening. The angle of the implant body and the position of the screw hole were very important factors and I also included the deafness of the prosthodontist. I wanted to know how frequent screw loosening occurred in prosthesis that was made by residents and made by professors. I wanted to do a comparison. Implant placement angle were measured using the software as shown. On the CAD file, you can measure the buccal lingual angle and mesiodistal angle as well. I want to check whether the screw hole of the implant was placed in the middle of the occlusal surface or if it was deviated, and if so, how much. I wanted to see the statistics. I also looked at the wear pattern. I wanted to compare cases where there were barely any wear and localized wear on one or two adjacent teeth and overall generalized wear up to the anterior area. 
I divided it into three groups and I wanted to look at how wear pattern can affect the screw loosening. I'm going to share with you my result. About 8.2% out of the entire implants, there were screw loosening. Other prosthodontic complications include the screw fracture, abutment fracture, and implant body fracture. But the most frequent complication that you come across is screw loosening, and it was approximately 8%. One of the most important risk factors causing the screw loosening was the wear pattern of adjacent teeth and the position of the implant, whether it was anterior or posterior implant. The expertise of the prosthodontist, buccolingual angle of the implant, and whether it was splinted or not. Let's look at the data. As shown in the upper left, if implant have been placed parallel, and in this case, the implant was 15 degrees inclined, and the third one was 30 degrees inclined. It was expressed in x-axis, zero degree is the, the straight implant. And the more the number increase, the more angle the implant becomes, to 25, 30, and 35 degrees. And with increase, the screw loosening also increased. This graph reflects all the implants, and when I made statistics using only posterior implants, the percentage of screw loosening increased even more drastically. In other words, in the case implant is inclined, more so than the anterior area in the posterior area, the possibility of screw loosening increases. The more angled the implant is, the more screw loosening occurs, especially in the posterior area. Now I'm going to move on to the wear pattern and whether it is single implant or a splint. Wear pattern is shown here in brown line. The brown line reflects generalized attrition. In green is localized attrition or patient with barely any wear. If the implant prosthesis is provided to generalized attrition patients, more screw loosening occurs frequently. Let's look at the single and splints. Single is in purple. In implants made in single crowns, there were a lot of screw loosening. In pink is the splinted prosthesis, and you can see drastically less amount of screw loosening occurring. To summarize the data, the more implant is angled buccolingually, screw loosening increased, and Screw loosening occurred most frequently when there was generalized attrition. Rather than splint type, if you fabricate single type, screw loosening occurs more frequently, and it occurred especially more in the posterior area. Can I ask you a question? If you look at the screen, more so than no attrition, Localized attrition patients show less possibility of screw loosening. You'd assume that if the patient does not have attrition, then there will be no screw loosening, but is there a particular reason why this is observed? I looked at this data, and this is my assumption, but in generalized attrition patients, screw loosening occurs most frequently because they grind their teeth and they may have parafunction and may be subjective to excursive force. We didn't just look at number six, a single crown, but we also looked at anterior implants and implants placed in canine. I also provided implant prosthesis to teeth in charge of the guidance and subjective to excursive force. There were a couple of screw loosenings in those cases, and I think the statistics reflect this. Areas where there are excursive movements, and maybe that's why the results came to be. For patients with minimal or localized attrition, screw loosening occurred very rarely, and in comparison, patients with a generalized attrition showed more screw loosening. Understand.
Thank you for your response. Let's briefly look at the questions and comments raised in the chat screen. Ernie Bao Bao. I really love this program. I look forward to your good lecture. Thank you. We will continue to provide good lectures, so stay tuned. ID Sia. I heard that Professor Peck was providing a lecture, and that's why I came. Let's scroll down. ID always join all. Thank you. Professor Peck, you look like idol. I envy you. Such a big compliment. Let's look at some questions. From Sosandori Dental Clinic. Dr. Park jong has raised a question. I think the question is quite difficult. TS regulars, the screw head is 2.0. TS mini and KS screw head diameter is 1.6. Does the diameter of screw head affect the preload at appropriate torque value? TS, KS, and mini. Does the screw head 2.0 and 1.6? Does the thickness of diameter affect the screw loosening? It's a very difficult question. Actually, I did not participate in developing these screws and I did not do the test comparing these screws so it's difficult for me to answer and if you talk with the development team of implant companies they are striving to come up with an implant with a strength and that does not fracture and they're trying to come up with implants with optimum numbers so i'm going to provide response later after i study more on these topics in general if the diameter is thicker i believe the screw loosening occurs less because there is more contact with the surface this is the second question dr park you have a lot of questions if the lower surface of the screw head is not flat and if you provide inclination does it affect resistance against the screw loosening the f lower surface of US type and SS type is flat and TS, there's an inclination. Does it help with preventing screw loosening? I believe this is a topic that you need to discuss with people who have used US and SS types. The lower surface, there's one that's flat and the other one that's inclined. Does that affect screw loosening? Likewise, I did not study much on the engineering side, so it's difficult to for me to provide an answer. Understand. If the lower surface is, in my opinion, at times there's a slight gap. In those cases, if it is flat or if the inclination or angle is smaller, I doubt whether it will have more impact. I'm not sure if it is inclined, it will lead to more contact surface. Why does the different manufacturers recommend different tightening torque value? What is the main reason for that? The torque value differ depending on the manufacturer. Sometimes it's 25, others say 30. And depending on surgeon, you have a torque value that you prefer. And what do you believe is the reason why there are differing torque values? I believe that engineers from the manufacturers have gone through many tests. There can be many factors, the diameter of the screw or the length. So they want to get to the optimum strength so that it does not fracture. And this is the result of their hard work. In general, I believe it is between 30 to 35. And there's not really a preferred torque value, but I just follow the manufacturer's recommendation. I believe it will differ depending on the material and the surface. Next, ID Tweed. 
Maybe he or she is an orthodontist. Depending on the connection method between implant body and abutment, is it hex, non hex? Does that affect the screw loosening? Yes, it is definitely related. The implant companies make different attempts as to the shape of the connection area between implant body and the abutment, whether it's going to be square, hexagon, or octagon, how much it goes in, whether it is connected, shallow, or very deep. All of these are related to screw loosening, and these are considered when development is made. Some companies make connection more deeply to increase the surface area that is in contact, but there's still lack of the clinical data. Just because it goes in deep and is in contact with larger surface, it does not necessarily mean it's better. There's a limitation in terms of diameter and just because going in deep to prevent screw loosening is not the best idea. If the connection area is made to intricate, the fixture can tear or there can be other complications, so therefore continuous clinical research and test research should be done. Thank you. And oh master, Prostodontics on Friday is really a great program, a bundle of joy and Friday. I recommend this program to all the residents around me. Thank you for making such a wonderful program. Thank you for the wonderful comment. ID here go to. I believe the comparison between the rod made by the implant manufacturer and the one that is just compatible is necessary. I believe the one that is just uh, compatible may not be good. I've already mentioned this in the test. I've shown you the micro CT. The product from the implant the company and using that for making abutment compared with the one that is compatible there's a little difference in the connection area it may differ depending on the lab and some labs may provide a perfect pre-milled abutment milling and others that may not be so it may be different from lab to lab, but it is best to use what is from the implant company. Even when you repair your car, they always say buy from the manufacturer. I recommend you buy from the implant company. ID Prosthodontics on Friday. Which product has the least possibility of screw loosening out of the implants that you use? I believe this is not a appropriate question. I'm not sure whether the question is regarding the system or the company. We are from Austin, so it would be nice to hear that it is Austin, but I believe it is inappropriate to mention names by system. In Austin, there is TS, SS, and US. US is external, TS is internal, SS is one body. It comes up to the gingiva. I believe the other companies' products are similar. By system, which do you believe have the least amount of screw loosening? The research done at the Gyeonggi University also compared the different companies. The prosthodontics division at Gyeonggi University does not use the tons of implants available. So we mostly use Strauman, Austin, and Dentium and there's no statistical meaningful difference between the companies. We do not use a lot of external type at Gyeonggi University. Over 90% we use internal type, US type, or other external types were not considered in this study. Thank you. Next is ID Awesome. This person asks a question very frequently. Thank you. At times, even without screw loosening, the implant crown and implant body becomes impacted compared with adjacent teeth. Do you know why this occurs? 
There's no screw loosening, but sinking down of implant body and crown occurred. Yes. With no screw loosening, the implant became sunk. I mentioned this earlier. You can call this sink down of implant or axial displacement. Some people say that axial displacement occurred and that infra occlusion resulted. I agree to a certain extent and to a certain extent I don't because when you look at the lab results when you apply low repeatedly certain level of sinking down occurs naturally but clinically you will not really be able to see it with your eyes and it will not be reflected on the articulating paper. To talk about infra occlusion of implanted prosthesis, for instance, let's say number 6 or 7 is missing and implanted prosthesis was provided and occlusion was perfect. After one year, if infra occlusion occurs, I do not believe this is because of axial displacement. As the implanted prosthesis goes in, the mandible may have repositioned itself or there may have been remodeling of the condyle. There may have been many different occlusion related matters involved. Because of these factors, you'd be able to see the difference. The sinking down itself, it's very minimum, just enough for shim stuck to pass through. But if it is more than that, I believe it is more related to other matters related to occlusion. Other reasons. I agree as well. Dr. Kim Yongjin's question. Depending on implanted prosthesis type, let's say cement type, SCRP type, we call this ER type in Austin, screw type. Is there a difference between the different types? So I guess this question is regarding whether there's any difference in screw loosening among different types. The test did not differentiate whether it was cement type or screw type. We just looked at the implant placement angle. And the prosthesis itself, there were various types, cement type and ER type. So I believe it is difficult to notice the difference. Perhaps next time, if there's opportunity, you can analyze whether there's difference depending on whether it is cement type or screw type. I believe, regardless of whether it is cement type or ER type, the connection area itself is the same. You make titanium abutment and on top of it, you place the crown that is cement type. If you make a hole for retrievability in preparation for later words, that is the ER type. The stability of the connection area itself, it's not very different. I'm cautious here, but I do not believe there's a big difference depending on ER type or cement type. Even though the connection area is different, the material that goes on top, there are these factors. So maybe depending on the material, will it have effect on screw loosening? Perhaps if you do analysis, maybe it will be not really relevant. But for instance, ER type compared to screw type, there can be less screw loosening perhaps. We can take a look at that statistically. Kyung University number one, Professor Cho, you're amazing. Aide Yong Yong. Thank you for the wonderful lecture. In the case of cement type, what kind of method do you use to retrieve the prosthesis? I believe this is not really related to screw loosening. I believe most of you use this method. I make a hook in preparation for possible issues. I use ejector on the hook to repair. In the case of screw loosening, it is impossible to retrieve the implanted prosthesis. Even if you use the ejector in that case, the whole thing is going to shift instead of the crown just coming off. 
or it can lead to other problems such as screw fracture or damage to the internal thread of the implant. It can lead to even bigger complications. So I just make a screw hole on the occlusal surface. So you make a screw hole on the prosthesis? Yes. When I make a prosthesis on the occlusal surface, I stain a little so that I can know where the screw hole is. So if there is a screw loosening, I look at the stain and can know that there is a screw hole on the occlusal surface. I can access it directly. So you stain slightly in the center, yes, light brown or slightly orange. Later words, of course these situations should not occur frequently, but if there is screw loosening, you can make a hole using high speed burr and access the screw. It's a very good way. You need to discuss this ahead to your lab technician. Thank you for the wonderful answer. Next. Hi, D. Fublik. Thank you for the meaningful lecture. If screw loosening occurs in an implant, it tends to occur repeatedly. In this case, is there a way to solve this problem? In the case the internal thread of implant body is all gone, should I remove the implant body and place it once again, or should I just refabricate a new abutment? It feels like a difficult question. It's a very good question. I've also thought long and hard about these matters. Once screw loosening occurs, the patient comes back frequently due to screw loosening and I believe the first thing to do is check occlusion. That's right. Screw loosening means that there is premature contact or there is some sort of interference when there is guidance. If you just retighten the screw, the patient will come back soon because the occlusal matter was not addressed. I always check the occlusion first. If the patient comes back too frequently, I replace the screw and connect it. The question also was about whether to refabricate abutment. If there is damage to the internal thread of implant body, if there is severe damage, I don't think there is any meaning in refabricating abutment. In worst case scenario, and I have this experience as well, in this case, no matter how many times you refabricate it, it continues to loosen. In this case, I make a post, like the way you make a post for natural dentition. Take impression and make a post and do cementation on top of that. On top, there's going to be a abutment structure. That will be my last resort before explantation. I'd make a post within the implant body and then make a crown. This would be my last resort. If that doesn't work, you'd do explantation, yes. The last but not least, a pretty sky. I love watching prosthodontics on Friday, on Friday high day. You get to watch prosthodontics on Friday and also win Starbucks coffee coupons. We entertained a lot of questions today. Let's carry on. I would like to express my gratitude to all of you raising questions in Friday night. I'm sure you've had a long week and I really appreciate it. Up until now, I've mentioned that screw loosening increases if implant is placed in an angled manner. I believe this is obvious. If the implant is placed perfectly with a screw hole in the center of occlusal surface, screw loosening will occur less frequently when compared with the case where the screw hole is slightly deviated from the occlusal surface. The level of increase with this was slightly less than that of when the implant was placed in an inclined manner. As you can see, Screw loosening occurred most frequently when the patient had generalized attrition. The results are similar. The pink graph shows the least, which is the splint, and the purple, which is single crown, showed more screw loosening. 
The more screw hole deviated away from the center, screw loosening increased and as mentioned earlier, you can see similar rate of increase in screw loosening. If you look over here, there was drastic increase if there was attrition and when comparing single prosthesis and splints in splints screw loosening decreased significantly it's another very interesting result i serve as a university hospital professor but that's not the reason why the data came to be. Screw loosening differed depending on the expertise. About 18% occurred if resident provided treatment. When it was done by the professor, it was about 5%. I think a lot of factors come into the play here. How occlusal adjustment is done and how accurately occlusal contact was provided and how much interference was removed. In the intricacy of occlusal adjustment, there was a slight difference between the professor and the resident. We also need to consider the re-tightening protocol. After you tighten by 30 Newton, some surgeon adjusts to do cementation and end the surgery. Others may wait 10 to 15 minutes and re-tighten and then do cementation. Other people may also wait a week and then do re-tightening. Depending on how you take the re-tightening protocol, screw loosening also differs. Actually, the results don't really reflect that retightening protocol because we only analyze CAD data and chart. Not many write about retightening in the CAD. The impact of retightening was not included in this study on screw loosening. I also did a test when I was in university. You would tighten, you slightly make it loose, and then tighten. You tighten three times. We don't just tighten and send the patient home. You tighten and untighten three times to get the best result in terms of screw loosening. And that was the result we gained statistically. Retightening protocol was not reflected in this test, but we focused on the implant angle in regards to screw loosening and did analysis. Therefore, other variants such as occlusal adjustment were not reflected. These factors may have affected the result regarding whether you're a resident or a professor. To give you a conclusion, this is a repeat of what has already been mentioned. I'm not going to go on further. What was interesting here was that I've mentioned that the inclination buccolingually can lead to more frequent screw loosening. And over here, we also looked at mesiodistal inclination. Less than thought, it does not really affect the implant screw loosening. Professor, they're all inclination. What is the difference between buccolingual inclination and mesiodistal inclination? I've looked at the data and thought long and hard. When non-axial loading is applied, if it shakes buccolingually, there's nothing to support it. And because of such force, screw is loosened mesiodistally. Actually, there are adjacent teeth, be it in the front or back. So if non-axial loading is applied, there's support coming from the adjacent teeth. Therefore, it does not really affect the screw loosening. Thank you, I've learned so much. This is the final slide of this research. The study looked at the risks related to the screw loosening. It is expressed as odds ratio. If the patient has generalized attrition, and if I need to provide implant prosthesis, you need to assume that screw loosening occurs five times more than that of average patient, and screw loosening occurs four times more in the posterior area compared with the anterior area, and three times more if the treatment is provided by the beginner instead of an expert. If the buccolingual inclination increases by one degree, so the 
probability of screw loosening increases by 1.17 fold. This is not a published data. We have submitted to Jomi, and if more statistical supplements are necessary, we're going to adjust it quickly, and you'll be able to do study search by the end of this year or early next year. As mentioned, I have limited clinical experience because I've started since 2007. It's been about 15 years. I've changed a lot. In the past, I really preferred cement type. The biggest reason why I preferred cement type was because I was able to make a crown similar to that of natural dentition and there was no screw hole in the middle. I was able to give a more accurate occlusal contact, but the biggest problem was screw loosening. The process of making a hole in the crown or fracturing or removing it itself was very difficult. It's been approximately two to three years that I've suffered due to screw loosening and now I've changed my clinical practice towards ER or screw type. I came to have a doubt. Is screw loosening a bad complication that we need to avoid at all costs? Yes, we don't want to come across it. You want to avoid it as much as possible, but whether screw loosening is really bad, I studied upon this topic. In natural dentition, if excessive occlusal force is applied, you all know that TFO is made, and this is supported by decades of research. If excessive occlusal force is applied to natural dentition or surrounding perio tissue is destroyed, bone loss occurs. What about the implant? If excessive occlusive force is applied, mechanical complications such as screw loosening or fracture can occur, and physiologic complications such as bone loss can be observed according to previous studies. However, if you look at recent studies, they came to doubt the biological complications. A lot of study focuses on whether bone loss occurs truly if severe occlusive force is applied on the implant. The recent studies doubt the previously thought bone loss upon excessive force on the implant. As for an implant, because there's a screw in the middle, before bone loss because of excessive occlusal force occurs, due to mechanical complications, screw loosening or fracture occurs. So screw loosening can be an indication of disadvantageous occlusive force or non-axial occlusive force or premature contact. Before bone loss occurs, a problem may occur in the screw first. Perhaps the screw serves as a buffer. And I am continuing to research on this. As mentioned, I tend to use a screw type or ER type. When I restore multiple implants, say full arch cases or more than three or four implants, in order to use a screw type, I use multi-unit abutment. This is a middle abutment. If the placement angle is not very good, this can be used to adjust it. And I use multi-unit abutment actively in these cases. Multi-unit abutment is tightened by 30 Newton, so it barely loosens, but the prosthesis on top cannot be tightened by 30 Newtons. It needs to be tightened by 10 to 15 newtons, so screw loosening occurs more frequently. However, you can easily access the screw hole, and this is not a difficult complication to solve. Today, I shared with you my thoughts on screw loosening, my clinical experience, and the study that I've done on the patients who have visited the Prosthodontic Division of Kyung University. It's Friday night, and I'm sure you're all tired, but thank you for listening. Professor Peck, thank you for the wonderful lecture. There are a couple of more questions. Let's take a look. This is a very difficult ID to pronounce. 
Greetings. If the implant placement has not been done in an ideal position in order to avoid screw loosening, what prosthodontic measures can I take? For instance, can I use custom abutment instead of stock abutment? You can use custom abutment or angulated abutment. In order to avoid screw loosening, what options can we take? As mentioned, the inclination of the implant has a massive impact on screw loosening, so I don't believe it makes a huge difference even if you use stock abutment or custom abutment. Unfortunately, if the implant has been placed in an inclined manner, screw loosening is destined to occur or it has much more possibility. You need to prepare ahead and you need to think of prosthodontic ways to address screw loosening more easily. I don't think that screw type, angle development and other components will help in improving screw loosening. As you have mentioned, the way you handle the problem is very important. In this case, when you do occlusal adjustment, will it help if occlusive force applied to the implant is made light? If you make the occlusion light or shallow, I do not prefer the solution. I give normal occlusion. Of course, there should not be any contact and excursive movement in MICP occlusion. You make occlusion of over three contact points. If there is screw loosening, you need to make a screw hole marking so that retightening can be made possible. ID Tweed, what is your screw tightening protocol after you place the implant and set it? In order to prevent the screw loosening, what kind of measures do you take? I use different methods. The basic principle that I have is that I need to follow the recommendation of the manufacturer. I tighten by 30 or 35 Newton and I wait 10 to 15 minutes. And in the meanwhile, I have the patient bite on the cotton roll. After 10 to 15 minutes, I do re-tightening and then I connect the crown. If you can use temporary crown or provisional crown, I make a custom abutment, do tightening. I have the patient use a temporary crown for over a month. And after that, I do re-tightening and take impression abutment level and then make a final prosthesis. However, considering the insurance system and the additional cost and the fact that the patient needs to make multiple visits leading to extended treatment period i don't do it in all the cases in the case i need to check occlusion more and if i can benefit with the use of temporary crown i use it to the utmost to encourage axial displacement and do retightening Temporary prosthesis is really useful in a lot of sense, not just in implant, but in prosthodontic area as well. I resonate with that the use of temporary may not be feasible. In this case, I wait 10 to 15 minutes and do retightening. Thank you. ID Bakas. I think this person likes this energy drink. You said that multi-unit abutment changes internal implant to external. Why don't you just use external implant from the start? I believe you have used a lot of multi-unit abutment and it's a very good question. Using multi-unit implant, you change internal type to external type and you get a passive fit of prosthesis more easily. You can use external type as well. In the case of extensive cases, so when you want to make a screw type prosthesis, you can place external implant from the beginning. But the problem is that if you can place external implant, that would be ideal. But due to anatomical limitations, let's say 
upper anterior, it can be difficult and external implant can be placed in an inclined manner. In that case, you need to use multi-unit once again to adjust that. If you can place the implant straight, you can use external type and then the make a screw type, but due to anatomical restriction, if the implant is placed in inclined manner, you need to use multi-unit abutment. ID trick choke. If you make prosthesis on top of multi-unit abutment, you said that you tighten it weaker. In this case, you experience more screw loosening. Yes, I tighten it weaker, 10 to 15 newton. I don't use multi-unit abutment for single crown. When I use it, it is for three or more implants or full mouth cases. It has splinting effect and cross arch stabilization is also made possible. Just because it is tightened with weaker force, it does not loosen easier. But if you use a multi-unit on single implant, it's going to loosen really frequently. Thank you. Ivy Ning Ning, Professor, you talk really calmly. Thank you. 3H Dentist, retightening is the solution. Thank you for your response, and I would like to express my gratitude to all of you who have raised your questions and made comments. Those of you who have raised questions will receive Starbucks coffee coupons. The chat event for prosthodontics on Friday continues, and I look forward to your avid interest in the next lecture as well. Uh, Professor Beck, we mentioned earlier that Friday yay day and Friday hi day. Is there a word of advice you'd like to give to your fellow dentists who have stayed with us despite today being Friday? As I mentioned earlier, I thought my prosthesis would last forever and that there would be no complication. However, I was very much mistaken. My thoughts on clinical practice changed a lot and I now acknowledge that my prosthesis would go through complications and I studied how to address these issues. I hope as you continue to study on, as your thought changes and as you add to your clinical experiences, I believe you will continue to grow. The topic was quite limited in scope in terms of screw loosening, but I hope my opinions were of help to you, and I look forward to seeing you more often in the future. Thank you. Thank you for appearing on Prosthodontics on Friday despite your busy schedule and providing a wonderful lecture. Dear everyone watching Prosthodontics on Friday, I hope the Prosthodontics on Friday with Professor Pek jang helped you in many ways and I hope you were able to gain various tips on screw loosening. The questions that were not addressed today will be addressed via replies. Next time, Professor An Jin Su of Seoul National University Dental Materials Division is going to talk about restorative zirconia for implant prosthesis in the next lecture. Thank you for watching up until late.